It's showtime, live at PJ's. Good morning, everybody. How are you all doing this morning? It's Sunday again. Keeps rolling round. It seems not like seven days since last Sunday. And yet here we are. So, I hope you're all having a nice morning. It's beautiful here on the Isle of Arran this morning. I can hear the birds coming in the window, the bird song. And I think I just heard my first bumblebee. I haven't seen one yet, but I just heard a buzzing at the window. It's like, that sounds like a bee. And we know that the bee likes the warmth, don't we? So, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna start with the serenity prayer, if that's all right. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. There. That's something I should use a little more. Courage, which some of you may know, was my word of the year for 2021. And I sometimes forget. I think by maybe practicing it in my morning journaling, try to use the word courage in each morning's entry. Just to remind me, because courage is what is really pushing me forward this year into showing up for this kind of thing into building a coaching practice, into publishing weekly content on YouTube. There's my friend Afan. Greetings Afan. Thank you for joining and thank you for your comment on my short video. That was really kind of you to do that. Much appreciated. So, courage to change the things I can. It's an interesting concept, isn't it? But I think for me the bigger one is, is the wisdom to know the difference. In AA they teach you that the only things that you can't change are people, places and things. That's all. Everything else you can change. I like that because it means that the only thing really that you can change is yourself. All I can do is be the best me that I can be. And there's another saying which I never used to understand that I actually like, which is keeping your side of the street clean. So imagine, well, a street. And the other side of the street is someone else's stuff. You don't want to be tidying up someone else's stuff. If you can tidy up your own stuff and be the best version of yourself that you can be, then everything will be okay. So that's what I'm trying to practice. The wisdom to know the difference. The courage to change the things I can. And the serenity to accept the things I can't. <laughs> it's so simple, but yet it covers everything. It covers absolutely everything. So it's, it's such a perfect, a perfect little prayer. And I know I can see why it's used in AA. In fact, I have a postcard of it, which I've been meaning to have framed and put onto my wall. It's over there in my letter rack. I don't know why I haven't done it. It's one of those things on the list, you know? You know those lists? Lists of things. Yeah, we all have lists. So, it's been an interesting weekend and it's only halfway through. Yesterday felt like a bit of a failure. And I've already talked about that on my podcast. So if you want to hear all about it, tune in to Quoth the Kamzer. It's not published yet because I just recorded it literally an hour ago. And got back. I recorded it while I was out with the dogs. And yeah, so I, I lean into why I feel like a failure, why I feel like yesterday was a failure. And also a big part of that is diet, 
which I talked about in my big video for this week, which I'm halfway through editing. Hoping to get that published today. In fact, let's commit to it. Right here, right now. It's going to be published today. Alright, so if it's not, you can come in and say, Oi, Cams, there's that video you promised us. So, accountability right here. Awesome. So yeah, diet, that was a thing. No, you, can, you can learn all about that. This morning I woke up at 5.30. I lay in bed for about 20 minutes and thought, I'm just going to get up. And so I did. I got up and I came through, came through here. Didn't turn on my computer. I lay on the sofa with my Kindle and I read some of Amanda Palmer's book called The Art of Asking. Now this was recommended to me on a podcast by one of my all-time favourite creators, a guy called Jeffrey Sidoris. I've been listening to Jeffrey since I discovered his podcast with Bill Wadman called On Taking Pictures, which was ostensibly a photography podcast, but it really wasn't. There was much more to it than that. It was more about the philosophy of art and about creativity in all its shapes. And that podcast finished it was probably over a year ago now, in fact, it might even be two years ago now, that that podcast wrapped up. And since then, Jeffrey's been doing multiple different experiments with podcasting. And on one of them, I can't remember which one it is actually, because I listened to them all, so I get mixed up with what they're called and who's on which one. Might have been iterations, where he spoke with a photographer called Jack, Jack Lowe, L-O-W-E, Jack Lowe. Now Jack is a UK-based Let's call him an artist rather than a photographer. And he travels around the UK visiting the lifeboat stations. There's one here in Lamlash actually, and he hasn't been to this one. So I'm keeping an eye on that. I would I would love to get a chance to meet him when when he comes, because he will come. He's visiting all the lifeboat stations in the UK. And he's taking a glass plate photograph of the lifeboat volunteers at each of the stations and this is this is like photography from the 1800s in its original form with glass plates and chemicals is it collodion i don't know what the names of the chemicals are but that's what he's doing and in the podcast which was spread out over two episodes because it was a long a long conversation extremely enjoyable if you're interested in art and creativity in any form I recommend that you listen to it I should look it up I didn't know I was going to talk about it it's, that's what happens on these chats I never know where I'm going to go so I can't really prepare stuff because you know what I mean but if you search Jack Lowe in fact I can do it right now since you're all here I know that he has posted a link to the podcast episode on his web page so I can post it in here for you all right, it's called the Lifeboat Station Project and this will will it link out? I'm sure it does, yes it's called Process Driven the podcast it wasn't iterations, it was Process Driven so I'm going to post a link here in the chat so you can follow up if you wish to and I recommend that you do, it's, it's brilliant so posting now Jack Low podcast episode with Jeffrey Sidoris there you go and on the podcast 
Jack Lowe recommended Amanda Palmer's book, The Art of Asking. The, co the conversation was around the idea that artists very often feel uncomfortable asking for money for their art. And I can relate to that so well. It's something that I have toyed with a lot, which is kind of why I set up a Buy Me A Coffee page which I've started posting links to in my newsletter. And I also have a Patreon page, which I haven't posted links to, I don't think, on my newsletter. But there is a support link on my website. And I had someone sign up yesterday, $1 a month. Somebody signed up and said, thank you for putting your recovery content out. It's much appreciated. And I was like, wow. Uh, wow. And when I posted my buy me a coffee link, within 20 minutes, somebody had bought me a coffee. I put it out on Twitter and it was Charles, Charles Kerr, a creator who was part of the YouTube part-time YouTuber Academy cohort one. He bought me a coffee to say thank you for all the value that I brought to the course. And I was just like, I was bowled over. And then Stephanie bought me a coffee, another YouTuber. Acta, again, YouTuber, friend of mine. And recently Bav, Bav bought me five coffees. Five. I know. So these are all friends of mine from the Part-Time YouTuber Academy. And this is what Amanda, Amanda Palmer talks about in her book. And this is why Jack Lowe referred to it in the podcast because for Jack Lowe he's he's obviously spending a lot of time on the road traveling to these different lifeboat stations which you know comes with a certain amount of expense and he felt uncomfortable asking for for crowdfunding money and that sort of thing and then he read Amanda Palmer's book and he was like wait a minute this is crazy <laughs> So he started putting it out there, just as I have done, after listening to the podcast. And he's building a business. I think he's he's funding his creative projects through selling merch, through patron websites and crowdfunding, and it's working. And I'm maybe 60% of the way through The Art of Asking, and I'm really, really enjoying it. It's got the potential to be a five-star book. It's, it's so well written. It's fun to read. And it's just jam-packed with, with ideas on how creators should be considering asking for money for their art and their creations. There's Moon Fan. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, Moon Fan. I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying your Sunday. I hope you have beautiful weather like we do here on Aaron this morning. So, yeah, that's my chat about crowdfunding and stuff. It's, it's really, is it validating is the word I want to use? I mean, getting that $1 sign up yesterday, it meant so much. I mean, it's, it's a dollar, right? It's not a massive amount of money, but it's the idea that somebody has found my content and finds it valuable enough to go in and maybe sign up for an account if you don't have one already in Patreon and then committing to a dollar a month. It's, it's so heartwarming and it makes me excited to keep making content, which is good because this morning when I got up at half five, I didn't feel like making anything. And yesterday was a bit of a struggle, if I'm honest, which, of course, you can learn all about in my podcast. So this morning, as I lay over there, reading the book, feeling tired, feeling like not going on the computer, feeling like, oh, no, I've got film to edit, or oh, no, I've got to go shopping later on, stuff like that. But I had enough in the tank to get me off the sofa to put my jacket on, put my shoes on, get the dog leads and step out the door. So that's what I did. I stepped out the door. 
into the sunshine. And it was lovely. It really was. I walked down the beach. I got my Zoom H4N recorder out my bag. And I started talking into it. So you may recall, for those who have visited my stream before, that for the past two weeks, I've been rising at seven, walking the dogs at seven, without AirPods. I know, right? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. This morning, however, I put my audio book on. It's a fantasy book, so it's not business related. It doesn't make me want to start tweeting things or anything like that. It's just fantasy book. And it was good. I enjoyed it. I'm actually, it's The Wheel of Time, for those who care, by Robert Jordan. I've never read The Wheel of Time. I figured it was time. I'm coming up to 50 years old and I've not read The Wheel of Time. What? And you claim to be a fantasy fan. So, yeah, it's good. And actually, I'm probably going to stick to the no AirPods at seven. But what I've been thinking about doing is going out twice. Once the Part-Time YouTuber Academy finishes, we've got one more week to go. Once it finishes, I think I'm going to start going out maybe at seven. The evenings for me are a problem. The evenings are when my energy levels are low and when the sugar cravings kick in. So this is what I talk about in my, my long video that I've just committed to publishing today. And I was talking with a good friend last week and trying to come up with some ideas about what I could do to get over this. And one of them was walking the dogs, exercise. So now that we've got more daylight, still be light at seven, I think the, we shift the clocks again. Is it next week? Spring forward, which means 6 p.m. will now be 7 p.m. So it'll be lighter at night. Isn't it funny how after 49 years I still have to... <laughs> I wish, to be honest, one day they would just stop moving the clocks. I don't like it. I really don't like it. But that's for another time. So yeah, if I can plan my day... Because my days are actually quite well structured up until that point and then they're not structured at all so cooking's a problem eating's a problem evenings in general are a problem so if I could find a way of using the calendar so at 6 o'clock I go to the kitchen I make food at 7 o'clock I put my earpods in my fantasy book and I go out with the dogs again it actually seems like a pretty beautiful life hack and that's what I'm going to do it's going to involve shopping so I am going to have to go to the co-op today which fills me with utter dread and that's something you can hear all about in my podcast because I spoke about that as I was walking around Lamlash with the dogs this morning in the sunshine yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. But I think I've just come up with a nice a nice hack. The sugar has been driving me nuts, the sugar thing. Really awareness is awareness is key. I can see it's happening. And I am taking measurements. Usually twice a day, first thing in the morning, religiously. Evenings not so much because Do you know what I mean? But I've got a rough idea. I think if I could... If I could get over that fear and measure, measure at night, and see the numbers, actually see them, that might push me into behaving better. Do you know what I mean? There's Matt. Finally, we can get started. Matt's here. Welcome to the stream, Matt. Thanks for joining. Good to see you. Matt's another friend of mine from Part-Time YouTuber Academy, posting amazing content on the property market. 
Matt's crushing it, he's an inspiration. And here's my friend Ruben. Ruben, nice to see you, thank you for joining. I hope you have some video recorded this week. I'm looking forward to seeing some. Just calling you out because, you know, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, cooking and sugar, exercise. It's a no-brainer, really, isn't it? You all know this already, don't you? You've all been saying, Cams, why don't you just do this, do that? But that's not how life works, is it? You have to figure these things out yourself. Accountability comes into it, I suppose, in, in a way. Which is why the past couple of mornings I've actually been making a TikTok video of my sugar measuring like well as it yeah it's live because I'm filming it as I'm doing it and then posting it out to TikTok with a hashtag diabetic epic fail might have been a hashtag I've used. Mm, that should tell you something. So let's move on. Let's talk a bit about guitar. Last night guess what happened? Well, let's go back a bit. Let's go back to a week ago. Some of you might know that I've been doing a guitar stream every Thursday and every Sunday, a live practice. I've done it now for three weeks, which means six sessions, and I've showed up for all six. There's going to be another one tonight at 8pm on my guitar channel, Acoustic Guitar I.O. And I'm learning a piece by one of my favourite composers called Will McNichol. Last week, I finally did the, the barber shop thing. You know where they say if you hang around a barber shop long enough, you're going to end up with a haircut? Well, I'd been hanging around Will McNichol's website, looking at his college programme, and I signed up a week ago for six months at the apprentice level. So for that, I get access to his tuition materials, his scores, his backing tracks. I get discount on one-to-ones, which I might consider. <coughs> Excuse me. And I get feedback, I think, on one video a month. I think it's one video a month. I'm not sure. Could be more, but I think it's one. And there's also a monthly Zoom call. So this month's was last night, it was my first ever Zoom call as part of the college and it was brilliant, really, really enjoyed it. I got to sit with Will and his pupils for about an hour and a half and two of the pupils actually played a tune, which I thought was amazing, I wasn't expecting that at all. I'm glad he didn't ask me, <laughs> given that I'm so new to it. It was just lovely, and I got to catch up with an old friend called Neil, whom I met at one of the gatherings that I attend down in the Cotswolds every year, which of course didn't happen last year. I'm hoping it's going to happen this year. It's usually about now, actually, because I've had some photographs come up in my reminders thing. Is it Facebook? I think it's day one. In my day one journal, I've had some photographs come up from previous gatherings, so yeah, it traditionally was around my daughter's birthday, which was on Thursday last week. So, yeah, I got to meet Neil at one of these things, and Neil was in the call last night, and he played a tune for us on a brand new guitar that he's just bought from a luthier called Tom Sands. I also met Tom at the, the last... Cotswolds gathering that I attended and uh, he's a lovely guy wicked sense of humour fantastic guitar maker and I got to meet his amazing apprentice Daisy Tempest the two of them travelled together and I actually recorded an interview with them I sat down and did a podcast interview which is on my YouTube channel at Acoustic Guitar IO so if you want to check that out that would be great it was a nice conversation, but Tom's guitars, boy oh boy, stunning. So Neil came in with 
his new Tom Sands model, which he's had for a week. Back in sides of spalted maple, which I'd never seen before. And another of the pupils, David Jenkins, again, someone I know from these gatherings. He mentioned that Tom has posted a video, a review, talking about this particular guitar. So I'm going to be watching that later today. Looking forward to that. It was just so nice to sit and sit and share some some guitar chat with mainly <laughs> middle-aged white men. There was one woman there. I think all in all, were there twelve? There might have been twelve. I didn't actually check. It was maybe ten or twelve thereabouts. Only one woman, which is I suppose what I tend to find when I go to these gatherings as well. It's predominantly middle-aged white men. I suppose maybe that's because I live in the UK. The Zoom call, of course, is international. There was a guy there from the Philippines, a young guy, who also played a tune, and, my God, <laughs> unbelievable, amazing. He played one of Will's pieces called Rain at Chim Ching, something like that. It's a Chinese place name. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Harmonics galore, and this guy, I mean, he must have been in his 20s. And Will asked him how long he'd been learning the piece, and he said he started learning it in February. I was like, wow. Who's phoning me? Uh, it's my friend Donald. I'll pick that up after this. So, yeah, it's it was, it was fun. Really, really enjoyed being in the stream. And I'm going to, it's inspired me to continue learning the, the piece that I'm working on, which is, is very, very challenging. Um, which is what I, what I need. I need to be challenging myself. And I think the great thing about doing it live as a stream is that it, I mean, apart from the accountability thing, is that I'm going to be able to look back on this and see how difficult it was at the beginning. And this is something that I advise my students to do. And also my daughter, my daughter plays French horn. And she's, well, she'll be going into her final year of high school in August. And she's just been accepted to the, no, what's it called? NIOS, National Youth Orchestra of Scotland. And she's doing well. I mean, yeah, it's, we only got that news this week that she'd been accepted to the youth orchestra. And it's a big deal. It's a big deal for, for her. It's a big deal for the family. And she does record. I mean, obviously now, particularly with, with lockdown and auditions having to be done in the house on video. So it's really good that she's going to have these recordings to look back on and see her progress and that's one of the one of the big incentives for me apart from the accountability thing the accountability thing is the biggest thing because i know i know what i'm like i'm not going to show up unless there's a commitment there and if the commitment's in public you know like like this call here you know when i was walking the dogs this morning i was thinking i don't feel like going on today Nobody really watches anyway, why do I even bother? You know, all these negative thoughts that go on in our heads. But the conclusion I've come to this week, I'll finish off with this. The conclusion I've come to this week is that making videos, being on camera, doing practice sessions, making podcasts, any kind of creative pursuit, but particularly being on camera, I find it to be energizing not energy sapping so if i can keep that in mind it, this this is what i talked about in my podcast so if you want to hear all about it please give that a listen it's going to be published today so that's two things two things i've promised to publish today my podcast it, it talks about the energizingness the, the energizingness the energy giving factor of making content versus the energy sapping factor of Zoom calls. 
that's what I talk about in my podcast. And in my head, when I've got a live stream scheduled and it gets close to it, it starts to feel a bit like a Zoom call because it's the same process. I'm sitting at the same desk, on the same camera, etc., etc. So, of course, there are similarities, but one of them saps my energy and the other one gives me energy. So, yeah, if you want to hear all about that, quoth the camzer. Dot com. I'll type it in. In fact, I will put it as an HTTP colon colon slash slash. Does it need a www? I should just do it in the browser and make sure because I'm never quite sure. So if I just copy and paste, you will get a link to my podcast. It goes out on Spotify and Apple and all the usual podcast RSS feeds so yeah I'd love it if you would have a listen because almost nobody does but I keep making them anyway <laughs> so I'm not going to play you out with a song today I'm just going to wrap it up because I'm already at 31 minutes I want to keep it within the 30 minute ish it's funny how I can just turn on a camera and talk for 30 minutes without really knowing what I'm going to talk about I love that about these I really enjoy them and I hope I hope that you do too. Thank you everybody for showing up today. Have a wonderful Sunday and remember you're not alone. Bye for now. <laughs>